Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. Today's video is gonna be all about how to get good tones out of the Logic Amp Designer, and I'm gonna talk you through it for absolute beginners. So if you've never used the Logic Amp Designer before, or maybe you've like looked at it and turned a couple knobs, this is the video for you. And I'm gonna jump right in. You can find this if you go down to Logic, Amps and Pedals, you've got Amp Designer, Bass Amp Designer, and Pedal Board. So we're gonna start with an Amp Designer. Recall default, you get this Vox looking thing here. And I'll hit play, let you hear what it is. I used a Fender American Tele directly into my interface and I gained it at minus 12 decibels. Here's my dry DI. It's just, just a Tele. And then here's with the amp designer. Super jangly. Okay, looking at the interface here, you've got the same set of knobs on every amp. So you're always gonna have the EQ, the reverb, level, on and off. You have effects right here and you can choose between tremolo or vibrato. And then you can turn on and off the whole unit. If you wanna sync the speed to your BPM, you can do that or free is just time. And then you've got a depth for the effect as well. And then over here in the output section, you have a presence for the amp, which is like ultra highs, I guess, like that really high kind of hissy, shimmery top end and then a master for the amp. Moving down here, you have a model. And so this is gonna change the entire amp and cab combo. So like if you do a small sunshine combo, that's gonna give you like an orange tiny terror setup, like head and cab. Um, and then over here, you can change the individual amp. So if you go to, you know, Boutique British, and then on the cabinet, you can change the cabinet individually over here. So you can actually mix and match a ton of combinations of heads and cab. And then if you keep moving, there's this little triangle if you hit it, it's just gonna give you just the amp panel. I don't think that's that helpful, so I leave it all the way open because there's more stuff you can adjust. Continuing moving to the right, there's this mic section, and you can actually change the mic that's on the cab. So if you want like a 57, you can grab that there. Sennheiser 421, they've got that. 609, the little pancake mic, that's what I call it. Ribbon 121, that's a Royer 121. So that's got like a warm kind of response. There's definitely a decent selection of mics here. And so I'd encourage you to like go through and see which ones you like. And that's gonna get you one step further to getting good tone. And then if you hover over the cab, you can actually change this little dot is where the mic is in relation to the speaker. So you can start all the way in the center of the cone or like work your way out to the outside. And then you can also pull it away to like reduce that proximity effect. So definitely do that as well when you're dialing in your tone. If you wanna start with presets, get something close and then tweak it, that's what I would recommend. We'll go down here. I feel like we wanna crunch for this. So let's see what American Reissue is. I think that's just straight up like Fender for days. Sounds pretty good. Let's see what else we have deep down. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. Some of these are questionable. It's definitely a challenge to get amazing sounding tones here, but it is doable. We've kind of got some amp settings that we like. I'm going to start changing the amp though and see what we can come up with. So let's hear this on like a vintage British Marshall. Holy crap. Next, I'm gonna go through a few different cabinets. I like these British ones, either the vintage, the modern, or the brown. That's, that's fun. I'm gonna roll with the vintage British. Um, I kind of had like a classic rock feel in mind when I made this anyway, so I feel like nothing's gonna complement that better than this vintage British. British. So now we're gonna play with the mic. I usually like to go in that order where I start with the amp and then move to the cab and then address the mic I'm using on the cab. 
So let's pop to a 57. That's always my starting point. <laughs> I like the 57 the best, so I'm going to roll with that. And I like this positioning the best. I already figured that out. And then it's important to use either the master on the amp or this output slider right here to match your amp output back to minus 12. Because then if you're going to move on and mix it from this point, you want it to be kind of hitting where it would if you had mic'd an amp. I hope that was helpful as a basic introduction to the amp designer within Logic. Let me know down in the comments if you have any questions on what I did or would like to see more videos like this. Thanks again for watching and make sure you like and subscribe. Mm -hmm.